This then means you have to use the world's loudest vacuum. And then I'll brrr. It's all ball bearings. Hey guys, so these are angle ports. They are a performance mod that we do that redirects the exhaust out of the head at an angle instead of perfectly square like stock, which is better for exhaust flow. They're designed for headers, which is why they have a very specific flange on them just for that. Making angle port tubes and installing them is quite a long process of fabrication and welding, so I wanted to walk you guys through to see how we do it. So these heads we're working on here are big bore 140s with an inch and a half exhaust valve. They've got bronze guides, race port exhaust, soft chambers, and the intake has been machined for Cartwright fuel injection intake rotors. Angle ports are a must on these heads because the stock tubes, even with Clark's headers, will be a serious choke point killing the power. Before we get into making the tubes themselves, first we have to cut the holes in the heads for the tubes. To do this, we use a big ass end mill. We have to add plaster to the fins so they don't break when we try to machine them. This then means you have to use the world's loudest vacuum. But in the end, uh, we get very nice 18 degree holes because we mounted the head on the plate of many holes at exactly 18 degrees. So to make them, first we bend the tubes. The bend angle is 18 degrees, which is the same angle as the turbo drains, funnily enough. Of course, to do this efficiently, we have to bend a long tube a bunch of times. But we can't use this long tube, so we then have to cut each tube to length. This is way harder than you would think, because not only do you have to cut it to the very specific length so as to not waste a bunch of material, for efficiency, but also you have to cut it square even when each bend is not exactly perfectly 18 degrees. Anyway, after doing that, I had to sand the tubes to the final length and squareness, so you can see that some of the tubes are really far off from being square, and once they are square, I add a little chamfer to the edge where they press into the head. With all the tubes to length and square, we can now do a trial assembly with the tubes and the flanges and the tabs in a test head. With the tubes in place, we determine their rotation to make sure the flanges are close enough to the tabs so that we can actually weld them. Once we line them all up, we put all the flanges in our fixture that perfectly spaces them apart and makes them level. The bolts in this fixture are shoulder bolts, so they're very precise in the fixture and they keep everything all lined up really nicely. We do have to add some kind of a funny looking spacer to space the fixture from the tubes. And this makes them completely level and square with each other. I'm ready. Tacking it is pretty easy. Of course the tubes here are stainless steel and the flanges are steel, which means we have to use some 309 stainless filler rod but this doesn't make the welding too much more difficult. With this tack, we pull the tubes out of the head, remove the fixture, and then weld the fillets on the underside or the inside or whichever side you want to call it of the flange and tube. My dad did this off camera, so there's nothing I can really show you 
other than the final result of the welding, which looks pretty good. Of course, he doesn't think that it looks that great, but I think it's not bad. All right, let's see what happens. Huh? Okay. Maybe don't. Next, we're going to weld the opposite side of the face of the flange, which will seal it up real nice. I zoomed in a lot and added a polarizing filter to the lens, which darkened it and, along with reducing the ISO and the shutter speed, got me these really nice clips of him welding. It's funny because he was complaining about not being able to see the pool behind the arc while he was welding, so you can actually see more than he could see in the helmet. There's a certain speed that works really well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, yeah, right there. Yeah. A little rainbow, little rainbow mm -hmm. color right there. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. With the welding done, my dad sanded the face of the flanges so that they were flat and didn't have a big weld bead sticking up. Now we put the heads in the oven to heat them up and we threw the tubes with the flanges in the freezer and we're going to install them. This is pretty simple. Just get them lined up with the fixture that we used before to tack and weld them and bang them in. We did the first head without our mics on, so there's no audio from this clip, but then the second head we did with mics on. The secret to all your problems, magnet. This is the second head. So you gotta assemble this again. Yeah, these were in the freezer just to get them cold. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you gotta use this to install them because it, it does it all at once. Okay, so whatever. So now. The only, only issue with freezing them though is that they, uh, they get condensation on them. Yeah. So yeah, you gotta throw them back in the oven to get all the water off them. 300 degrees. Let's look real quick. A little helper to make sure they. Hot. Yeah, it's quite hot, yeah. So now we just have to make sure that it goes down. Once it gets to that position, it rings pretty good, so let's just look in the... <laughs> we'll undo these here. Is it nice and... Oh, they're nice and square. Look at that. Mm -hmm. What's nice about it is they're the, the position of these holes are all in line. I mean, we could have pounded the tubes in and then welded the flanges on, and then 
Mm -hmm. But you can't weld the underneath side under here. Yeah, exactly. So to make them cool, you got to weld the flanges on before you pound them in. Yeah. That makes it a little more annoying. And then you grind them flat. But look at that. It looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. So the next step is just to... Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, it's kind of hot. Yeah. What we ought to do is put the whole schmear in because... This is your, this is the, your best friend. The right bar... Yeah, the bar, you don't want the bar to rust either. Yeah, so let's just do that. Yeah. We'll put them in for, I don't know, 10 minutes or something. Just to or get the We can just put them in and turn the oven off and that... Yeah, that amount turn of the oven off should... And then it'll just dry and it'll it'll cool off on its own. Yeah. Ta-da. Wow. And then Mignana, maybe mm -hmm. early in the morning, mm -hmm. I'll get the MIG welder out and the tabs are all done. You want to look at the tabs real quick? Oh yeah. So basically the tab, I made these, but this morning I, I V-grooved it on the ends and this is, this will get bolted on to the head, but not tight. Yeah, I'll put this in tight with the, I'll push this away, turn it down tight. And with the flange here, I will tack, tack, tack and then I'll loosen this so that this has movement when it needs it and then I'll run the bead in here and let it sit and then this will it'll shrink without pulling the tube or anything yeah the reason we're, we're using we're doing tabs instead of doing one of these is just because the tolerance stack up of the machined hole the bend in the tube the tab place, the hole placed on the tab, the hole in the actual thing here where the tube yeah, is going through. The casting quality, the casting any quality kind of offset of, of the that. casting vertically. It all, it's all ball bearings. No, it's, it's, all, all, it's all screwed up. So if you did one of these with the tab on there, when you hammered this in, there's no guarantee that this hole is gonna line up with that hole. Exactly perfect. Exactly yes. perfect. When you weld this tab on, that will line up every single time exactly perfect no matter what. Yeah, so that's the fix for that. That's it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so now... manana on the tabs. Yeah, you'll probably see the finished I gotta, product. I got to clean tomorrow. the die come off the bottom, is all. Yeah, you see the finished product tomorrow mm -hmm. after the uh, after he welds the tabs on. And then those heads are ready to touch up valve job, clean and assemble, and on the way to Canada. Yeah. So, and yeah. we have another set of heads to or three more that need angle ports. Lots of heads that need, needs angle ports. Ooh. Ah, welding. Yeah. So weld the tabs on uh, as separate pieces from the flanges. And uh, you did exactly like you said, you, you pushed them uh, out so that when you weld it, it pulled in. It pulled in. And it pulled in, it it's didn't got, bind the bolts. The bolts are all nice. So that worked out really good. And uh, flanges and, are all down and we'll yeah. snug them up. Of course, one question I had was, why do you put tabs to bolt it to the head? And it's because of the weight of the headers. Because you don't want the header to be, be hanging down or maybe if you got mufflers on there or whatever and the strap comes loose and they hang mm -hmm. down and you start pulling this loose. and. You don't want to take a chance. No. So it's also yeah. it's secondary retention keeps these so that when the head expands, which it will, mm -hmm. these can't fall out because they're bolted to the head. Yeah. Not just pressed in. Yeah. So. So basically, these have a little bit of of uh, roughness. Little bit. I use a when I welded them. I use this. Uh, copper plate I put that in place here oh really so that I can weld and it wouldn't get splatter on the yeah we we'll get splatter the all over the place there's a tiny dress. bit here so I'll just touch that with the with the yeah with the with a uh, angle grinder a little angle flap grinder. wheel on there and and then torque the bolts up and they're done yeah and uh and they're still all <laughs> square just like they were square level yeah. square and level you see the yeah very nice and level very very nice. Mm -hmm. And you can see down the port there, it looks nice and open. Would be cool. Uh, this is a, a thing you've done on one head. You actually machine 
this lower corner, this of, little the, corner. of the rocker box out of yeah. the way and come out at an angle this so way. So instead of, instead of looking down the port. A, yeah. A quarter of an inch out of here. Instead of looking down the port this way, you're looking at this way. So then you get a really, you can see the, better, the much better line of sight. You can see a straight, <clears throat> straight shot right down in into that, in the chamber, so. And I'm not sure how much extra that'll help on CFM. I don't know. These with the port work are probably 160 CFM, but it's 600 thou lift. It's pretty yeah. much 650 lift, they'll go to 650. They might flow even beyond that. And I don't know, changing that angle, if that's gonna help, it probably will a little bit. Yeah, but anyway, These that's, are, a, that's a bigger mod than this is. This is just angle ports. Yeah, it's gonna be a monster. Very, very nice heads. Mm -hmm. So that should be it, guys. Yeah. This one I had to, this valve cover bolt. Oh hole. yeah. Somebody had tried to drill out a broken bolt and it was off center and they drilled a bigger hole and ran a 5 16 bolt in there. And so I dug all that out and machined this open and just filled the whole thing in with filler and then machined it flat and then uh, put the quarter 20 threaded right hole where it's supposed to be. And it's, uh, you know. It's just done. It's impossible to tell. Nope, except for the spot of weld on there. And mm -hmm. if you glass bead that off, you probably wouldn't see that either. That's it. Yeah. That's how we do angle ports. Yeah. Cool. See you, see guys. you guys. Adios.